Welcome to Eastbourne, the home of tennis. Today's episode is going to be Ace, so let's start the show. Devonshire Park is the home of grass court tennis in Eastbourne, East Sussex. For a week every year in June, the venue plays host to the Rothsey International Tennis Tournament. Held in various forms since 1974, today the event is classified as a WTA 500 Series Tournament for Women and ATP 250 Series Competition for Men. Previous winners include Martina Navratilova, Kim Kleisters, Taylor Fritz and Alex Dinamore. Eastbourne is the last of the so-called warm-up events for Wimbledon, which this year takes place from July 1st to the 14th at the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club in SW19. Why are you hedging your bets? Well, you shouldn't be hedging your bets. You should be subscribing to us, Paul and Marcus, on YouTube. Well, we have come to Eastbourne just a few weeks before the Rothsey International Women's Tournament on the WTA Tour is due to take place. And we had planned this episode months ago, but just a couple of days before we came, we heard the news, which has been devastating to the town of Eastbourne, is that the tournament is going to be downgraded from next no. year, from a WTA 500 to a 250, because the main women's grass court tournament in the run up to Wimbledon is moving to the Queen's Club in London. So it seems sort of quite poignant that we're actually coming here because this is now the last year of the oh, no. full Rothsey International That's or horrible. whatever it might be called next year. Yeah, I know that the mayor of Eastbourne's not happy about it at all. And, you know, I think there was always something special about this tournament. I've come to it once before myself and I actually met Amelie Moresmo, wow. who was the world number one at one point, and she signed my program. Oh, cool. And you have been to mm. the tennis centre here with me because we came to a Davis Cup tie one year, didn't we, Paul? Yeah, and I remember heading home having to take the bus to... Three Bridges or something. Hayward's Heath. Yeah. Or Damn, Lewis yeah. or something like that. Yeah, there were problems with, with the trains coming by. But what I'm saying is that we have experienced yeah. tennis here on a couple of occasions. It's actually quite calm here in Eastbourne today. But one of the things that you may notice when you come to the tournament or if you watch it on TV is that it is rather windy here. Mm. Um, but that is one of the sort of the sort of the cute little things oh. about this tournament because it adds that extra little bit of excitement into the game because you never know what way the ball is going to land. The race to the WTA finals. Is this last year's? Yes. Probably. 
So it shows Ariana Sabalenka was number one in the women's at the time, with Iga Swasiek number two. And also over here we've got they the rankings. Them, yeah, they've got the... Well, there was a... I think there still is a men's tournament here as well. I'm not sure what's happening to that next year because... Maybe scrapped. Yeah, yeah. Have a look at the ATP website and WTA website for all the latest information about what is happening with the tournaments. But they are going ahead as normal this year. And we have doubles rankings here too. So these must be the outside courts. Yeah, but it's all just so. like open at the minute. There's like nothing lined up. So we're filming this in the middle of May and the tournament takes place in the last week of June. In fact, when this episode goes out, it will be on the Friday of the tournament on the eve of Wimbledon, no less. That's why we timed it like this. But I've never seen no, tennis yeah. courts just laid out as not tennis courts, if you see what I mean, it's just like one big sort of green expanse. There's like, there is no, there are no boundaries to the courts, no, yeah. nothing like that. It doesn't say that you can't walk on the grass, but I wouldn't dare put my feet on this because it looks so pristine. And look, here we are coming up to the centre court now. I think that must have been court number one back there. That one looked pretty big too. Yeah, it did look pretty big, but this is even bigger, the centre court. If you're watching the Eastbourne tournament on TV, you will often see a church spire in the background and perhaps even hear it peal its bells. That is St. Saviour's Church. Well, Paul says it is anyway, so if it's wrong, write in and complain to Paul. The pavilion clock has been given in memory of Lucy Alice Argyles, once a most familiar figure on the tennis courts of Devonshire Park, she maintained the old traditions of the game and was still playing tennis at the age of 78. There is much more to Eastbourne than the tennis. Now let's take a look. Oh, there's so many banks around. Well, I'll tell you why I think there are. It's because there are a lot of older people who live in Eastbourne. Yes, it's like one big retirement village. And older people tend to still want to have a physical bricks and mortar bank to go into. And that would explain why there are so many banks still here. Well, Paul, there are a lot of stalls here selling all manner of foods and knickknacks and things. I think I spotted one that I want to look at. Oh, what is it? Is it something to eat? No, it's like alcohol. Oh, of course. I should have guessed. Why don't you take a look? Okay, so the place behind me, the people in the blue awning, they have like flavored types of vodka. So I'm gonna see whether it's good for me or not. I don't know. 
you don't really like flavoured vodka no, now you've decided. I don't. Oh well, you'll have to give that one a miss. But at least it's good to know that there are all these different types of stalls here, right? Paul, look at this. This must be one of the weirdest sort of um, juxtapositions I've ever seen. Or perhaps it is actually the best layout of shops ever. You've got a window to the womb over here, which is a centre that does pregnancy scans and all that sort of stuff. And right next door, you've got the co-op funeral care. So you've got from life to death next door to each other. How poetic. I think we should go to the pier. Well, what can you see, Paul? Take us on a tour of the map of Eastbourne Seafront. So we are here, the Carpet Gardens. So we're not that far from Eastbourne Pier. Yes, right there behind us. And hopefully, maybe we get an ice cream. Well, of course, Eastbourne is by the sea, and you can't come to Eastbourne without going to the seafront and the pier over here. There's also a bandstand, and they are Making playing a lot, a lot of music tonight, which we Copyright. cannot feature here on YouTube. But I think they must be practicing. Um, wasn't it like a prayer? They had some Madonna stuff and some other. It wasn't Madonna. 80s, 90s. Well, <laughs> one of them was. Song. I know, but I don't think Madonna was performing no, herself. She wasn't. This sort of reminds me of Brighton because of the way that the uh, roads go and then the... And these buildings here. over here yeah. too, yeah. Like the ones near the seafront. Like this is like reminiscent of Brighton. What's all this, Paul? This looks like a bigger version of our bags that we put out for collection. Isn't that like manure or something? Oh, that, you, you, sm you smelt something before. You said it was I piggy. piggy. That's what it is. They're, they're getting ready to put down feed. Is it like fertilizer? No, like it was really pungent. And then you thought that I had like two heads beat because I said, I smell piggy. Like, I smell manure. And then I was like, what? Where? Where is it? Like it just was like wafting everywhere. But this makes sense now. Look, well, there's a even book. a book. <laughs> I am Kirsty. I am, what's it say? Lydia or something? Lydia, I lived, I died. Or oh, did God. I? That's interesting. <laughs> Cliffhanger. <laughs> Ice cream, Paul, what do you think? I think so. Do they have soft scoop? I hope so. Whippy. No? Oh, yes. Now, let's hope it doesn't cost as much as it did in Copenhagen. What, like about, like about seven pounds? Seven each. pounds for a cone. Six pounds was that, Paul? Six pounds. Wow, so that is a bargain. So this is how much one of the ones cost. Less. Yes. yes. Less than one. Are they both for you though? Unfortunately. <laughs> oh. Thanks for sharing, Paul. 
Now, does it pass the Morelli's test? Let's give it a go. It's nice, it's good, it's dripping. Oh, I don't think it's Morelli's, do you? No, it's definitely not. Mm. No. We have a habit of doing this. Doing what? I mean, eating ice cream <laughs> with dripping <laughs> when we're filming. Now, do you remember when we did it at Coney Island? When it was 35 Celsius, remember? It was a hot mess. Yes, that was a real hot mess. And while we're filming this, it's around 7 o'clock in the evening. And it's about, I don't know, 19, 20 degrees Celsius. 21, maybe. Yeah, and look, it's dripping. <laughs> oh, I got oh. it on my jeans as well. <laughs> and of course, it would have to be one of those times when I haven't brought a change of jeans with me because we're only here for one night. Oh, and that reminds me, there will be a hotels episode later in the year where you will see where we are staying. <laughs> This is the one thing that I love about the seaside. I love the waves hitting the shore. There's like something really tranquil about it. And it is always a calming effect. The same thing like one of those white noise sound machines. So yeah, I would recommend anyone wanting to de-stress and to feel better and to have better mental health come to the seaside definitely worth the visit there's still a couple of hours of daylight but the lanterns have now come on i would think that eastbourne pier will be cashing in on visitors this year <laughs> and i mean cashing in is, mm. isn't really the operative word because if you go to brighton from the summer you will have to pay a pound. I think they are right now trying to put that into effect. While we're filming it, yes. Well, it's been announced that it is going to happen. So by the time this goes out, I think that you'll have to pay your pound. Wow. What have you spotted, Paul? Look at all of this. The White Cliffs of Dover. That kind That's of not Dover. No, but that kind of looks like the way that it's indented and... Yes, uh, they are white cliffs. And having like the green bits on top. I don't know, it just kind of seems like it. It's a grassy knoll. Mm. Noel Edmonds. <laughs> Our time in Eastbourne has come to an end. Oh. It certainly has. But the tennis season, of course, is in full swing with Wimbledon beginning on Monday. So you can look forward to that. And for those of you that have liked our episode today, give us a thumbs up. For those of you that haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. It's free of charge and it would really help us along our journey and experience on YouTube to make you better content 
And for those of you that want to leave a comment, you could do that as well. And for those of you that really want to be extra generous, you could buy us a, a coffee. coffee. Yes, because we really do need our caffeine to keep us going on these episodes. So from Eastbourne, we will say bye bye for now bye -bye. and see you next time. Bye bye. bye. Oh look, we couldn't leave Eastbourne without having a battered sausage. I had a battered fish before. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, mm. uh -huh. Delicious. Uh -huh. Another one of the sounds of summer. I love this, especially on a Sunday. This isn't a Sunday when we're recording this, but it's it's when you get an aeroplane flying overhead. Now, it's a shame that at this time of the evening, that the sun's not actually shining on the towpath. But we can assure you that it is shining because the sky is blue and the sun is over that direction. Isn't it weird that we've lived in Uxbridge for so long, yet we haven't been here before? Yes, it is, but today we're going to explore it. Ooh! It's always good to have a map, Paul. So, where are we? So, we are over here. I'm sorry, but who in their right mind would pay to lie in? London, like it's just too hot to lie down right now. Well, not for four quid for an hour, and there are people who are just sitting on the ground because I think it's to rent the the, pa the park the deck chair. Yeah, and Bring your uh, own towel. I think that's why most of them are empty. <laughs> I have been running on and off for a good ten plus years. I think it's between like maybe fifteen years, maybe. Something like that. Um, I think that running is really good for you and it does help clear your mind and it does release a lot of endorphins which is good for you and it gets rid of a lot of the stress that you might have bottled up. Mm -hmm.